Hello, and welcome to an episode of Office Hours at the Beach, kind of, sort of. I'm uh, at Seljarnarnes Peninsula in near Reykjavik. It's a nice nature bird preserve. And you know, I came out here at low tide a couple of days ago, thinking that I was going to walk you over to a lighthouse over here, and then come to find out that at high tide, I can't actually walk over there because this whole area is buried in uh, uh, water, obviously. So I can't make it across over there. We'll just do an office hours over here on the beach. And we'll do a short one today. We'll do just a three question version. And in this one, we'll tackle questions about entity framework, code first development, uh, right sizing your data types, and a long running query getting stuck. So first off, the highly of the highest voted uh, question was, Philip asks, I'm just wondering what you see in various workplaces of how people and companies do version control for SQL Server objects like stored procedures. People struggle with that everywhere, not just in the SQL Server space, but really in databases in general. St uh, source control isn't something that we've been really good at as database administrators over the years. Uh, it's especially true for servers themselves. You know, in the cloud now, we're taught treat your servers like cattle, not like pets. We, it's, it's very rare to see a company do repeatable deployments that are based off of source code for their SQL servers. Uh, they're, they're even just only getting baby steps in towards doing things well like stored procedures and data inside the database because often there's configuration data inside the database that needs to be tracked like single source of truth tables. Um, so I haven't seen people doing it well reliably exactly the same way across lots of companies. Every company seems to have invented their own wheel for right now. If you want to learn more about source control, the person to know is Alex Yates. Alex Yates, Y-W-A-T-S, runs a company called DLM Consultants, as in Database Lifecycle Management. And he specializes in helping companies get their source control up and running for SQL Server. I've referred several of my clients over to Alex and uh, I don't get like referral fees or anything for that. It's just he's the guy to know in that space. Um, and some of my clients have said, you know what, after talking to Alex, we see now why there isn't an easy route towards deployment and we, we're gonna come back to it in a while and see how, if things have gotten better. Uh, so yeah, if you suck at it, Philip, it's not just you. Everybody in the industry sucks at it right now. Second one up, Stuart asks, are developers, oh, you know what? I also forgot to mention my little wireless microphone. It's so windy out here that I brought this little guy along because uh, otherwise I'd be yelling full tilt and you wouldn't be able to hear anything. Uh, Stuart says, are developers use entity framework and code first? Now, I'm gonna say to people who don't know on the webcast, code first means that your developers uh, basically design the data model as part of their Visual Studio work, as opposed to going into a true database development tool and designing tables. He says, uh, our developers use entity framework and code first, which often leads to bad data types and column names and relationships in the d database. The reason, the reason why Stuart's saying this is because Microsoft's Visual Studio often picks uh, bad, or entity framework really, picks bad default data types. The first time I saw uh, Visual Studio deploy a, a, a string as an nvercare, I just about lost my mind, as an nvercare max. Like their default data type for strings was an nvercare max. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. That's the worst possible thing. Uh, he says, recently I found a, a table with 20 nvercare maxes and date time seven data types. Uh -huh. Uh, all unnecessary and I see red, red mist. How do I tactfully convey the long-term implications? So the, for me, the problem is if Microsoft doesn't see it, if Microsoft themselves are doing this as defaults, uh, then it's an uphill battle in terms of a struggle for us as database people it's really hard to coach people to tell them that what Microsoft is doing is wrong. I, I almost got to think that we have to wait it out and see if Microsoft will fix this in future versions of Entity Framework. I haven't looked at all at any of the Entity Framework 6 stuff or whatever, because I tend to be so far behind the, the eight ball 
people don't come to me for new development. People come to me for existing applications to go fix them. So what I would say is have them go to entity framework classes for uh, databases. I know Julie Lerman runs one, and it, it doesn't have to be in person. I mean, you can watch this kind of stuff online. Julie Lerman has uh, training material specifically for entity framework developers uh, who are working on databases. And even, I know your developers might think that they're advanced, but start off with the basic stuff uh, because in even her basic material, Julie Lerman talks about, uh, hey, what Microsoft does as a default data type is wrong, and you need to change better or choose better defaults for your data types. Um, but I wouldn't try to be seen as the expert yourself because it's basically you going up against Microsoft, and you're not going to win that battle. You want to pick somebody big in the industry and say, hey, check out these this training material. I personally found this useful from Julie, so that that way it doesn't look like you're the bad guy. My wife is texting me, so hold on a second here. I'll say, uh, uh, ATM, filming office hours, uh, filming office hours, just hit ATM, will be home in 20. All right. Uh, and then the third, this is why I said I was only going to do three questions today. Uh, and then the third question was hello from, hello from Russia. Hello from Russia says, I need to purge about 50 million rows from a very concurrent table, meaning lots of inserts, updates, deletes, with about 3 billion rows. I'm deleting it according to the clustered index in batches of 5,000 rows. I've added wait for delay in between these batches so other queries can proceed, but anyway, this huge purge is getting stuck. Okay, so getting stuck isn't a technical term. Make sure to define more specifically what it is about the process that isn't working. Like, are you dealing with blocking? Are you getting blocked? Are you blocking other people? Are you having problems with the transaction log filling up? You know, what is it that specifically is broken? Um, then, because this is probably beyond one for office hours, you'll want to post as much specifics as you can over to a place like dba.stackexchange or sqlserverscentral.com, but don't say getting stuck. Be specific about what it is that isn't working. I'm going to give you general advice that's going to apply to lots of solutions or lots of times when people say things like getting stuck, which, come on, that's ridiculous. Uh, getting stuck. If you're getting blocked by other people, you're going to want to look at the locks that they're taking out because it's entirely conceivable that other sessions are taking out table level locks because they're running queries that uh, that aren't optimized very well. Um, it's entirely conceivable that they're doing table scans, that you're hitting maintenance jobs, that somebody else is doing an index rebuild on partitions. Um, so that's one way to think about it is if you're the one getting blocked, look at what locks the other session needs and how you're going to be able to work around those. You could be blocking, and I know you said 5,000 uh, rows at a time you're doing. That's actually not a good idea. You want to go lower than that. Because at 5,000 rows, you can still be hitting lock escalation. You can be locking up to the table level. The, the technical number on that for lock escalation is about 5,000 locks, not 5,000 rows. If you want to learn more about that, uh, hit up Kendra Little, which rows count or which locks count towards lock escalation. Kendra Little has a, a blog post out there talking about which locks count towards lock escalation, uh, and that'll help you better understand the locks that you're taking. And then a couple of general pieces of advice. Make sure you the table has as few indexes as practical. I'm sure you already know that, given that the table's got 3 billion rows, you can't afford to have all kinds of indexes sitting around. But this may be a situation where you need to drop a few indexes temporarily and then add them again back in with online equals on later after your purge has finished. Um, the uh, uh, and then uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, you say you're doing it about 5,000 rows at a time in order of their clustered index. Make sure that the list you're giving SQL Server is either a specific list of IDs or it's stored in a temp table or a real table where the primary clustered key, clustered primary key of the table with the list of rows that you're deleting 
is in the same physical order as the clustered index of the table and that you're using things like top 1000 or top 2000 in your subquery or CTE to go get the list of IDs that you're deleting. So SQL Server knows you're not hitting a table lock. Over and over again, I see people um, whose, uh, they don't make it explicitly clear to SQL Server in either a CTE or a view or a subquery that you're only getting top 1000 or top 2000 rows. And if you don't put in that top 1000, top 2000 uh, with an order by and it matches the or, uh, primary key, cluster primary key of the table, SQL Server is going to not be completely sure and pop it up to a table scan. And even worse, it's going to do it sometimes and not, sometimes yes and sometimes not. So you just got to be really careful with your testing. All right, that is a short three question version of a windy office hours today here on the Seltjarnarnas uh, Peninsula. Erica and I are off to the Westman Islands today. We're going to go hop a ferry over to the Westman Islands and go do some puffin rescuing. So I will see y'all later at the next office hours. Adios. Where's my button?